my appeal to all the intellectuals, to all the men and women of culture, and to all citizens, is not to give up to this defeatism, to have the courage to find the negative forces, yes, because the populistic forces, the extremist forces, are negative forces that are today under a team that very often is an anti-European team, making the revival of the old demons of Europe, like extreme nationalism, like xenophobia, sometimes racism. These are negative values. And it is important, in face of this challenge, instead of keeping ourselves in the comfort zone, namely so-called establishment parties, to have the courage to go out and fight, not to give up to those arguments, to explain with reasonable and rational arguments, sometimes for some of us with emotional, why we care about Europe, why Europe is something we must cherish precisely to defend these values. And if sometimes in Europe some of us have doubts about how important these values are, just look to Ukraine. Those young people in the streets of Ukraine by freezing temperatures are writing the new narrative for Europe. When we see in the cold streets of Kiev, men and women with European flag fighting for that European flag, it's because they are also fighting for Ukraine and for their future. It's because they know that Europe is not just the land of opportunity in terms of uh, economic uh, uh, development, because they have seen what happened in Poland or what happened in the Baltic countries, but also because Europe is the promise of hope and freedom. And I think the European Union has the right and the duty to stand by the people of Ukraine in this very difficult moment, because they are giving to Europe one of the greatest contributions that can be given. Just yesterday, I had a phone call, another one, with President Yanukovych. I've asked him to show restraint in face of the, this, this, this recent developments, to use not the force against the people that are demonstrating peacefully, to respect fully the freedoms that are so important for all of us in Europe. I've asked him to receive uh, uh, high representative, vice president of the commission, Cassie Ashton, that will be uh, in Kiev uh, already tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, so that she can also have a role in trying to bring some solutions to that very tense situation that Ukraine is uh, living today. And I hope that uh, European forces will show their commitment to our common project. Because it's not true that it is only in the western part of Ukraine. No. Most of the Ukrainians care about the future in peace and freedom, and I think we have this duty to recognize them today. Because precisely, our history is a history of openness. 